Okay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome everyone to our Sunday celebration once again. Hello Al, how are you doing? Very good, thank you. Yeah, he's good. My friends, in the beginning, as we prepare for today's liturgy, let us open ourselves to God's presence and mercy. Lord Jesus, you are compassionate and merciful to all. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you show us the way to eternal life. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you loved us even to death on a cross. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. O oh God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, 
and to strike after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, 
but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such a large crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And as he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, a sower went out to sow, and he sowed. Some seeds fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, where it had little soil. It sprang up at once, because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seeds fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. How many words have been spoken to us when we were growing up? How many seeds were dropped into the soil of our minds and our hearts during our early years and even today? Those words came from our parents, guardians, loved ones, and many others. We hear words of greeting and welcome, words of encouragement and affirmation, words of advice and guidance, words of correction and discipline, words of warning and caution, and words of comfort and consolation. We also may have heard words of hatred, bitterness, jealousy, and bigotry. At the time, we may or may not have appreciated any of those words, but more than likely we heard them. Only God knows how many of those words took root in our lives. But one thing is clear, our lives would be immensely different without the sowing of all those words. As adults, we still need the sowing of a word. I feel sorry for those people who have heard nothing but words of criticism, hatred, and blame, or have to survive on a diet of silence. But happy are those who hear the words of encouragement, love, and understanding. The Word of God gives us guidance in times of doubt. Psalm 
reassurance in times of difficulty, comfort in times of sorrow, correction in times of danger, and hope in times of despair. Human words, no matter how necessary they are for us, will never fully nourish us. We do need the Word of God. The Word of God gives us guidance in times of doubt, in times of difficulty, comfort, in times of sorrow, correction in times of danger, and hope in times of despair. God's Word is never a negative word. It is spoken word with love. Just as food nourishes our body, so the Word of God nourishes our mind, our hearts, and our spirit. God speaks to us in the most hidden parts of our being. But do we hear Him? There are many voices out there vying for our time and attention today. In fact, every day we are subject to an avalanche of words coming at us. How can we hear or even recognize God's quiet word in the midst of all that sound? We can do so only by creating a little bit of stillness and quiet within us, finding time to just sit and be with God. It is not enough to merely to remember the word. We also have to take action. One of the ways of telling a false diamond from a true diamond is by means of light. In case of a false diamond, the light goes through right through the stone. In the case of a true one, the light remains inside it, bringing it to life and setting it on fire. Some, with some people, the word of God goes in and comes right back out. They hear the word, but do nothing to respond to it. But those who keep the word, that is, who act on it, are transformed by it. Today's parable asks the same question of us as it did of the crowd who listened to it many, many years ago. What kind of soil are you? How will we let the Spirit grow within us from day to day, moment to moment? Any of us can be any of the soils that today's parable design, describe. So we ask ourselves, what kind of soil am I? Sometimes in my case, my mind is closed to new ideas and commitments. I forget nothing old and learn nothing new. I am a path made hard. Nothing can grow within me. Sometimes my mind is soft, shallow, and sentimental. There is emotion, but no action. The shallow soil of sentimentality and the hard rock of cynicism conspires together to prevent roots from reaching out. Sometimes my mind is preoccupied, absorbed with the everyday occurrences, cluttered with its trash and endless turmoil of events. I become incapable of observing, reflection, or prayer. Merciful, there are times when I am none of these. I am instead a rich, fertile, a welcoming soil that accepts the scattered seeds and produces crops. When I am this kind of soil, my task is to be patient. Growth takes time. During this time, there is need for observation, reflection, and prayer. There is a wonderful promise in today's gospel that keeps us faithful to that work. It is a promise of our Lord that our faithful efforts will be rewarded 30, 60, or 100 times over. That is not an exaggeration. That is a promise. We open ourselves now to receive that gift, confident that the divine seeds planted in our rich soil will grow and yield a hundredfold. What kind of soil are you? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, 
and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Having been nourished by the Word of God, let us now entrust to the Lord our needs and those of the world. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For bishops, priests, deacons, and all who teach the faith, that they may faithfully sow the seed of God, word, and tend to its growth, we pray to the Lord. For farmers and all those who work in the fields throughout the world, may God prosper the work of their hands and bring about a bountiful harvest, we pray to the Lord. For all those who will go to bed hungry tonight, for all who lost their jobs, for the homeless, may their cries be heard and answered, we pray to the Lord. For parents that they may inspire their children to ground their hope for the future in the loving care of God, despite all problems and anxieties, we pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered, may we nourish fertile soil within ourselves, our family, and our parish, so that the word of God may take root and flourish, we pray to the Lord. For those who are sick and those who have asked for our prayers, may the Lord bring them healing and peace, we pray to the Lord. For all who have died, that they may experience the joy of everlasting life in the kingdom of God, especially Thomas Gigenti, we pray to the Lord. God of never-failing love and compassion, you provide all we need to grow and thrive in the life of discipleship. Hear our prayers that in our study, your word and service to you and our neighbor, we might come to everlasting life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May our Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands through the praise and glory of his name for our good good of all his church. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that, when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We have lifted them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He is just. 
It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, to your beloved Son Jesus Christ, your Lord through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis I. Pope and Joseph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
through him and with him and in him. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and from by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effect upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Do we have any announcements? Where, where's Cathy? Over there. Okay. Thank you so much to all of you who have kept us going. Your presence online and in person is so important to building our community here at St. John's in Hillsdale. We're able to continue to serve you through your generosity, so please consider making a donation by going to the Faith Direct button online, which if you're on our website is right above this video, and if you're on Facebook, there's a post with directions of where to go that went up on Friday. You also can consider dropping your envelope at the rectory or mailing it to the rectory at 69 Valley Street. Also, just a reminder that we are having our regular mass schedule here on the weekends again, which is Saturday at 5 p.m. and Sunday at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., and 12 noon. When you're ready to join us in person, we have a reservation system, which is on our homepage, stjohnhillsdale.org, there's an email and a phone number. You can reserve either way. We've not reached our limit on any mass yet, so please don't hesitate to join us. We miss you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for praying together this time. And uh, Lisa, thank you. I always say she is like an angel, beautiful voice. I didn't hear today uh, Roberto, but it's just because he was wearing his mask, I guess. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Al and Kathy. Have a wonderful week. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you in his kindness and pour out saving wisdom upon you. Amen. May he nourish you always with the teachings of the faith and make you persevere in holy deeds. Amen. May he turn your steps toward himself and show you the path of charity and peace. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and each other. Thanks be to God. God. Take the word and go out to every